Hi biology lovers, welcome to biologyexamstory.com. Today the topic of our discussion is enzymes in recombinant DNA technology. First of all, starting with definition. Recombinant DNA technology is some of the techniques used in genetic engineering that involves identification, isolation, insertion of gene of interest into a suitable vector to form a recombinant DNA molecule with an intention of producing a number of copies of that particular gene or producing the product encoded by that gene. And we have discussed in detail the steps in recombinant DNA technology in our previous videos. Now moving into the enzymes in recombinant DNA technology. This is the first class of enzyme that is used in recombinant DNA technology that is nucleases. There is restriction endonuclease, rest restriction exonuclease and riponuclease H. And the second class is DNA modifiers, DNA polymerizes there reverse transcriptase, alkaline phosphatase, polynucleotide kinase, terminal nucleotidyltransferase, transferase and methyl transferase. And finally, the lysis enzyme that is used to join two DNA molecules by formation of phosphodiester bond. And that is the DNA lysis. We'll be discussing in detail how this enzyme helps in making a recombinant DNA molecule or how these enzymes are involved in recombinant DNA technology. Starting with nucleases, nucleases are nucleic acid degrading enzymes. There are two types of nucleases. First one is endonuclease which will cause internal cuts in a DNA molecule. And the second one is exonuclease that will cause cuts at the terminal regions or nucleotides are removed from the ends. Restriction enzymes are one of, one of the most common nucleases that is used in recombinant DNA technology the discovery of these enzymes actually marked the birth of modern biotechnology. Restriction endonucleases are also called as molecular scissors that makes cuts at specific sites within a DNA molecule, whereas exonuclease removes nucleotides from the ends. And we have discussed in detail about restriction enzymes in our previous videos. You can refer that for more. The next enzyme is ribonuclease H or RNAs H. This is an RNA degrading enzyme that is used to remove RNA strand from DNA RNA hybrid during the cDNA synthesis. And this is an mRNA molecule that is isolated from a cell. You can see there is a poly A tail and we have added oligo DT primer and reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that will synthesize a cDNA from this mRNA template. Now we have a DNA RNA hybrid. So in order to synthesize a second strand of the cDNA, this RNA should be removed. And this RNA strand is degraded by ribonuclease H enzyme. So the function of RNA H is the degradation of RNA strand in an RNA DNA hybrid during cDNA synthesis. The next enzyme, that, that is the second class, that is the DNA modifiers. First one is DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is an enzyme involved in elongation of a strand. It adds complementary nucleotides to the free 3 dash OH end of a strand. This is a double stranded DNA molecule and we have added a primer at the 3 dash end so there is a free 3 dash OH end. This is a primer annealing and the elongation is carried out by polymerases like TAC DNA polymerase and DNTPs are supplied. Suppose this is a DNA polymerase it will bind to the primer region free 3 dash OH end of the primer region and elongate the strand. And this colored is uh, this. This is a newly added nucleotide. DNA the function of DNA polymerase is the addition of nucleotides that is complementary to the template strand. Now the next enzyme is a reverse transcriptase enzyme. Reverse transcriptase enzyme is the only enzyme that is capable of using mRNA as a template for DNA synthesis. And this is a viral enzyme. This is enzyme is widely used in the preparation of cDNA library or cDNA synthesis. This is an mRNA molecule. There is poly A tail and we have added an oligo DT primer. Uh, here comes the use of this enzyme. Now we have the mRNA. So this enzyme can synthesize DNA strand cDNA using this mRNA as a template. Later in the DNA RNA hybrid, this RNA CH will cleave out this RNA strand and cDNA will form the second strand. The function of reverse transcriptase is a formation of a DNA strand using a mRNA template. Next is alkaline phosphatase. Alkaline phosphatase removes terminal phosphate groups at the 5' end of DNA or RNA. 
and this helps in preventing re-annealing of vector DNA in recombinant DNA technology. It also helps in radioactive labeling using P32 of DNA or RNA strands. And this is what is happening with alkaline phosphatase. There is a phosphate group at the 5' region of a double-stranded DNA molecule. In the presence of alkaline phosphatase, in the presence of water, this phosphate is removed by the enzyme alkaline phosphatase or dephosphorylation occurs. And this is the actual reaction. This is a nucleotide with sugar base and the phosphate group. In the presence of water, in the presence of alkaline phosphatase, and this is where the alkaline phos phosphatase works. This phosphate group is replaced and that is dephosphorylated. This dephosphorylation takes place in the presence of water, so it's a hydrolytic cleavage. So the function of alkaline phosphatase is phosphate removal from the 5' end of a DNA or RNA strand. The next enzyme is polynucleotide kinase. It is an enzyme that is just opposite of alkaline phosphatase. It adds phosphate from ATP to 5' OH group of dephosphorylated DNA or RNA. This is used for rephosphorylation and also in radiolabeling. So this is a 5' OH end. This is the dephosphorylated end of a DNA strand. Polynucleotide kinase will add phosphate to this end by using ATP. This the phosphate in the ATP is transferred and ADP is released and phosphate is added to the 5' end. So the function is rephosphorylation of a dephosphorylated strand. Second, in radiolabeling, it transfers radioactive P32 from ATP to dephosphorylated 5' end of DNA or RNA. Next one is terminal nucleotidal transferase. And this is an enzyme that adds nucleotide to 3 OH group of DNA fragment used in homopolymer tailing to make blunt and sticky that helps in joining fragments with blunt ends. So also used in radio labeling. And this is a double standard DNA molecule in the presence of terminal nucleotidal transferase. Polyatailing occurs. This addition of nucleotides is by this enzyme terminal nucleotidal transferase. The use of this enzyme in recombinant DNA technology, suppose this is a fragment A, so we have fragment B and we need to join these fragments, both are having blunt ends. It's not easy to join these fragments. So in order to make this fragment sticky, we have added poly A tail here and poly T tail here. So both these fragments are sticky now, both these are having complementary overhangs, this will anneal easily. And that is the use of terminal nucleotidyl transferase. And the final enzyme is the methyl transferase. Methyl transferase is an enzyme that adds methyl group especially to adenine of DNA. This is widely used in recombinant DNA technology to methylate a fragment in order to protect it from digestion by restriction enzymes. Uh, let's take an example. GATTC is a recognition sequence for eco R1. And this is GATTC. And this eco R1 will bind to this site and cause cleavage and we get two fragments upon cleavage by ECOR1. In the presence of methyl transferase, methyl transferase adds methyl group to the adenine residue. If there is methyl group in the adenine residue, this ECOR1 cannot access the restriction site so that that particular strand is protected from cleavage by that restriction enzyme that is ECOR1. There is no cleavage. We can protect the DNA strands from restriction enzyme cleavage and also protecting the strands from cleavage by restriction enzymes of the host system. Finally, the third class that is like is sort the joining enzymes. Once we have two DNA molecules from two different sources, one is a desired DNA, other is a vector, we need to join these molecules. And this final joining or sealing is done by the enzyme ligase. Ligase joins the two double standard DNA molecule by forming phosphodiester bonds. The phosphodiester bond is formed between the 5' phosphate of the nucleated of one DNA fragment and 3' OH end of the other and it requires ATP and NAD plus for its activity. And this is what is happening with the ligase enzyme. So we have joined these two. There is a phosphodiester bond missing and this phosphodiester bond is joined or sealed by ligase enzyme. That's why it is called a sealing enzyme or molecular glue. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsorry.com.